Welcome to our exploration of the fascinating world of ancient Egyptian mythology. Today, we delve into the enigmatic realm of the Egyptian goddess Nefertiti. Join us as we uncover the secrets and symbolism surrounding this. Nefertiti was the wife of the pharaoh Akhenaten of the 18th dynasty of Egypt. Her name means, the beautiful one has come, and, because of the world-famous bust created by the sculptor Thutmose, she is the most recognizable queen of ancient Egypt. She grew up in the royal palace at Thebes, probably the daughter of the vizier to Amenhotep III, a man named I, and was engaged to his son, Amenhotep IV, around the age of eleven. There is evidence to suggest that she was an adherent of the cult of Aten, a sun deity, at an early age and that she may have influenced Amenhotep IV's later decision to abandon the worship of the gods of Egypt in favor of a monotheism centered on Aten. After he changed his name to Akhenaten and assumed the throne of Egypt, Nefertiti ruled with him until his death after which she disappears from the historical record. Even though it appears that Nefertiti was the daughter of I, this claim is far from substantiated. Inscriptions refer to I's wife, Tai as Nefertiti's wet nurse, not her mother, and nothing is known of Ice's lesser wife. I, in addition to his other duties, was tutor to the young Amenhotep IV and may have introduced the prince to Nefertiti when both were children. Nefertiti and her sister, Mudnijam, were certainly regular members of the court at Thebes and, whether or not I introduced her to Amenhotep IV, the two would have known each other simply for that reason. Ancient images and inscriptions indicate her early interest in the cult of Aten but, as every Egyptian favored one god or another, there is no reason to believe that she had any ideas relating to monotheism or elevating Aten above the other gods. All that can be stated with certainty is that both sisters were adherents of Aten and may have influenced Amenhotep IV's interest in that cult from an early age. Any definitive statements regarding her influence on the rise of monotheism in Egypt must of necessity be speculative as there is no conclusive evidence to support it, just as there is little information on her life in general. By the time she was fifteen years old she was married to Amenhotep IV and, after the death of Amenhotep III, she became Queen of Egypt. It is at this stage that some scholars claim she most exerted her influence on Amenhotep IV to abandon the ancient religion of Egypt and initiate his religious reforms but, again, this is unsubstantiated. In the fifth year of his reign, Amenhotep IV changed his name to Akhenaten, abolished the religious practices of Egypt, closed the temples, and decreed Aten the one true god. While it is possible he created monotheism out of a genuine religious conviction, it is more probable that it was a political maneuver to cut the power and wealth of the priests of the god Ammonius, whose cult was extremely popular. Throughout the 18th dynasty the cult of Ammonius had increasingly grown in wealth and prestige so that, by Akhenaten's time, the cult's priests were almost as powerful as Pharaoh. Instituting monotheism, and proscribing the old religion, would have completely restored power to the throne, and that is precisely what it did. The god Aten was now considered not only a powerful god of Egypt but the god of creation, the one true god of the universe. The couple had six daughters, Meritaten, Mekataten, Ankesenpaten, Neferneferuaden Tashrit, Neferneferur, and Setapenra, but no sons. With his lesser wife, Kia, Akhenaten had two sons, Tutankhamun and possibly Smenker. Akhenaten married two of these daughters, Meritaten and Ankesenpaten and may have had children with them. What is clear, however, from steel and inscriptions which survived the later purge of their reign, is that the royal couple was deeply devoted to each other and constantly together or with their daughters. The royal family originally lived at the palace of Malkata in Thebes, which was built under the reign of Amenhotep III but renovated under Akhenaten and renamed Tihanaten. The historian Barbara Watterson, and others, also point out that the palace was abundant in gold decorations and ornate reliefs. However opulent Malkata was, the new palace at the city the couple founded, Akhetaten, was even grander and, more importantly, served a symbolic purpose in the new religion of Aden. In her role as part of the divine couple, Nefertiti may also have been co-regent. Akhenaten joined his cartouche with hers as a sign of equality and there is evidence that she took on the traditional duties of Pharaoh while her husband busied himself with theological reformation and architectural renovations. 
Images which have survived depict her officiating at religious services, receiving foreign dignitaries, moderating diplomatic meetings, and even in the traditional royal role of the king smiting the enemies of Egypt. None of these images would have been created if there were not some truth behind the stories they depict and so Nefertiti must have wielded more power than any woman in Egypt since the time of Hatshepsut. From the royal palace at Akhetaten, she sent forth the royal decrees and made the decisions which, according to tradition, were the responsibility of her husband. Around the year 14 of Akhenaten and Nefertiti's reign, their daughter Mekataten died in childbirth at the age of 13. An image in relief from the time shows the couple standing over their daughter's body in mourning. Shortly after this, Nefertiti vanishes from the historical record. There have been many theories offered to explain her abrupt disappearance and, among these are. She fell out of favor with her husband because she could not produce a male heir and so was replaced by Kia. She abandoned the religion of Aten and was banished by Akhenaten. She committed suicide in grief over the loss of her daughter. She continued to rule under the name of Smenker until her stepson, Tutankhamun, was old enough to assume the throne. Of these theories, none of them can be substantiated but the fourth, and even that, many argue, is uncertain. The problems with the other theories are that Akhenaten already had a male heir in Tutankhamun and so would not have deserted his wife on that account, there is no evidence to support Nefertiti leaving the cult of Aden, she was still living after the death of her daughter and the throne name of Akhenaten's successor is the same as hers. The reason why Theory 2 has long remained popular is because of evidence that the worship of the old gods began to revive toward the end of Akhenaten's reign and, it is thought, this could not have happened without some kind of royal support or encouragement. Since it is considered impossible that Akhenaten would have abandoned the religion he created, it is speculated that it was his core gent who was behind this. The revival of the old religious practices, however, could easily have been a grassroots movement by the people of Egypt who had grown tired of being forced to neglect the traditional faith of the land. The Egyptians held that their actions were intimately tied to celestial balance and that their relationship with the gods was of vital importance. In abandoning the old gods of Egypt, Akhenaten would have thrown the universe out of balance and it is quite likely that the former priests of Ammonius, and those of other cults, finally decided to try to restore harmony to the land on their own, without consulting their ruler. Since it is known that Nefertiti was a devotee of Aten prior even to Akhenaten's conversion, and that she regularly took part in religious services, as well as the fact that no images or inscriptions give any evidence that she forsook the cult, it is highly unlikely that she would have led a return to the traditional religious practices of Egypt. The hatred the people had for the new monotheistic religion of their pharaoh is exemplified in its complete eradication after the death of Akhenaten's successor Tutankhamun. Tutankhamun himself, upon taking the throne, abandoned the religion of Aten and returned Egypt to traditional practice. His successor, I, continued his policies but the last pharaoh of the 18th dynasty, Hormheb, went further than either of them. Hormheb, claiming he had been chosen by the gods to restore the true religion of Egypt, tore down Akhenaten's temples, defaced his steel, and tried to eradicate all evidence that the heretic king and his family had ever ruled Egypt. It is because of Hormheb best decrees that so little is known of Nefertiti, and other royals linked with the Amarna period, in the present day. The wonder, really, is not that so little is known but that, considering Hormheb's hatred of Akhenaten's reforms, and his dedication to the mission of erasing the king and his family from history, that modern-day scholars have any information on the Amarna period at all. Thank you for watching, don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video with your friends.